My name is Jehi Gordon, Trinidad and Tobago's number one 400 meter hurdler. We can gain the life of. You know what gain the life of is? Basically, after you don't train, you go in home and rest yourself for business. Today, Lozana stoned me off for the track, as you can see by my condition, but say what? Coming through is Jehu Gordon. Jehu Gordon, perhaps moving fastest of all. Gordon. This year was the first year that I've actually been vomiting at practice. I really wanted it. Now gone one better. For Trinidad and Tobago, he's still just 21. Fourth in this four, four years ago, now you're the world champion. How does it feel? And I wanted to just give him my heart out here and represent my country, Trinidad and Tobago, 150%. This is to you guys. What's up? I'm good, man. I'm good. All right, there's a story about you uh, hurdling desk in, in primary school and mm -hmm. you just put it in. Yeah, not, remember, no? not primary school at Belmont Boys Secondary. That was where I was introduced to hurdles, um, Mr. Albert King. He was my physical education teacher at Belmont Boys Secondary. And he had us jumping over some stools there and he just realized that I had it natural. And I asked him if he was a madman because, you know, I was tall as lanky. I used to run the 800 and 1500 meters and I thought it was all about speed. But to my knowledge now, it's more about technique. most important but the mental aspect of this of the sport is definitely even greater. Now what at, at my stage I think it's 90% mental and 10% physical at least to me. You know where everybody here we're talented but now we still believe that they could they could actually do it on the day. Jay Hugh Gordon what what does it take out of you when when you run a race like that? You mentioned emotional balance and so on and how did it affect you for the final? Yeah it's is it it is emotionally tiring. Um, the amount of energy that is expended through the rungs, you definitely need to be able to raise yourself for the heats for the semi-finals and bring the most in the finals. So it's basically, basically the way how you channel the energy is the way how you distribute it on the track. So if for the heats you use up all the energy then by the time the semi-finals come you'll be born. You know, so as you grow you learn and you learn how to channel the energy a lot better. He says he's going to win this surely with Tinsley in silver medal position and Carlson gets the bronze. What do you feel after that final? After the final I felt as if you know, I wanted to box down somebody, but that's just sport. You know, you win some and you lose some. The best of the best does lose. What's Chelsea, you understand? Chelsea does lose. So if Chelsea could lose, then it's like, hey, I don't have a problem with it. But, you know, my father always told me growing up, if Brian Lara could out for a duck, then who is me? You know, and I just always take it one step at a time. I know in sports, you have your ups and downs, but it's for me to accept it and just move on from that. <laughs> Yeah, like before the Moscow games, were you angry most of the time? I was angry as disappointed because I get to realize out here, especially in, well, in, in the world of sport itself, that the winner is the only person that is celebrated. You understand? Everybody else, nobody remembers the silver medalist or the bronze medalist. And I just find that it is sad because, you know, we give up so much on a daily basis as athletes to be away from our friends, our families, and to not be respected. You know, respect is not giving us money, but respect is to understand, you know, how much we sacrifice and prioritize on a daily basis to make our country proud you know so if we don't even make it out the first round or the second round or even in the Olympic final and we come six seven or eight we are among the best in the world they only take a selective group of people to make it to the Olympic Games so think about how many millions or even billions of people on this earth and yet still Trinidadians are in the final or in a semi-final or just at the United Games. Talk about the sacrifice a little bit that, that goes into being a, a high performance athlete. Yeah, I just <laughs> what do you give up? I just give up being away from the people who care about me the most you know, we, Chris, we are being criticized for something that others think that they know more than us while we are the ones out here putting in all the hard work. So sometimes they see us place last, they see us place first and they always have something to say. But the ones who are away from us who see in the injuries, who see in the aches, who see in us waking up early on the morning, who, who see in us not eating all the fast food every day, watch James. If you watch James Bell, you can see for yourself what's going on. But that's, that's just, you know, life. And I've accepted that that's how life is. And I just go about my life as if I live my life for me and nobody else. So when the gun went in Moscow, what was going through your head? You think Wine and jam. Wine and jam. <laughs> when the gun went in Moscow, it was, it was definitely an eye-opener for me because I did not expect to win. Uh, Michael Tinsley was the favorite going in. He had 40, 
47 point something going into the finals. He was unbeaten whole year, but with the 400 hurdles, it, it's it's so tough on your body and it, it, it requires a lot just to go through and run fast every single round. Then I was able to be, just be relaxed every round and just bring my best in the finals. So in Moscow, it was fire, fire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was the decision to stay in Trinidad as a part, of, as opposed to going in the states? You know, um, what does that say for your own development? And essentially, what what made you make a minor? Nah, it's just the, the the people who's been there for me at the start, as I told you. You know, nothing better than a good home cooked meal on a Sunday, Sunday um, afternoon. So I'm just grateful and, and trying to be a. a, a a, a pivotal part of the people who've been there for me from the start and believing in me and I always try to show them the love so that's why I'm home if I go outside I'm, I'm basically by myself and no one to look after me and we, we, we've been seeing the benefits you know as I said in sports you go through ups and downs but I'm just always thankful for each and every blessing that I've received to date. to achieve an Olympic gold medal that's my main aim in track and field we all aim to achieve the highest in the sport and which, which would be the Olympic gold medal um, but as, as of now some aches and pains I have already done two surgeries in 2020 and last year in 2015 I've had a couple injuries not many injuries but just some recurring factors because of my my body composition and the way how I'm built and she's just like I'm always growing which is ridiculous because every time I see somebody new they're like oh, are you growing still and I'm like how would you agree you know it's a competitive advantage for me to do less steps in the 400 meter do this but it's like my body is just it's just always growing into new things each each year it, it has been it has been difficult it has been a difficult road um, I would say that I've gotten over my surgery but the area just doesn't feel the same since you know it's my lower abdominals that's where I get all the, all the, all the power from especially my lower core area and it def definitely hasn't clicked for me as yet but I'm keeping the feet and I know I'll get there there it is no doubt at all in my mind the what you could expect from me at Rio is to make sure I give it my best effort. You know, I'm not going up there to back down, I'm not going there to just have an experience. I've been there, I've done it and I definitely will give a good showing. And what could we the public do for you? What could you the public do for what me? Is that, energy yeah, I think I think it might be a, a bit too late for that now, mm -hmm. but you know our Olympics it takes four years, every four years to, to go out there to wake up on the morning to make those sacrifices and for people to try and come on board two months before the Olympics, you tell them best to go back in the bed and sleep. But you know it's always great to, to see the country rally around you. It, it helps you to, to kind of throw some weight on your shoulder and a good way to know that hey, 1.3 million people behind your back, even though some of those countries have all kind of 28 million and 40 million people behind them. But it's good when the country is behind you. We definitely feel it and it's an extra push. Jehu Gordon, well, I bet he can't believe it. Get ready now, come on, let's go for Trinidad and Tobago. We have it down to one heart, red, black, and white in we hearts. We know that we have the fire when it comes down to the wire.